And uh, today we're rocking and rolling with one of our really good friends, Shona from the Trade Accelerator Program, which is put on uh, here in Calgary by Calgary Economic Development. And we're going to talk about startup accelerators and leveraging networks, which has been so critical to the good lawyer journey. And uh, hopefully we can share a few tidbits of knowledge that uh, will help you on yours. So let's, uh, let's kick things off. A few quick ground rules, folks. Um, any questions? We love when these sessions turn into a bit more of a dialogue. So please drop your questions in the chat. We're gonna do uh, a little introduction on the Trade Accelerator program. Sean's gonna do that. Zach's gonna moderate a bit of a fireside chat and uh, I've been hanging out in the startup world for a few years now and shown up for at least as long. So hopefully there's a few things that we can share that will be useful. And uh, then we're going to have a couple pre-submitted questions. We have a great good lawyer offer that we're going to share for the folks that stick around till the end. And then we're going to end the day on just pure Q and A. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat, drop them in the Q and A on zoom. And uh, I promise we'll try to get through as many as we can. And today I think we'll probably be able to do most of them. Mm -hmm. Quick disclaimer, uh, this presentation, including commentary and audio text form is provided for information purposes only and should not be relied upon for as legal advice. If you need legal advice, you know where to find us at goodlawyer.ca. So let's go. So I mentioned this briefly already, but this is our seven part startup series. Again, all the past lessons can be found on our Good Lawyer YouTube channel. Today we're on lesson number four and uh, we have three more coming up in uh, the next few weeks. Cash and equity compensation, so getting back into the legal fundamentals of running a startup on July 7th. So Josh, our uh, chief legal officer, will be back to host that with myself. On July 13th, we've got another non-legal uh, startup series with our head of growth, Grant, as well as Carrie Houston from 321 Growth Academy, if you've heard of the folks over there. And that's going to be all about the low hanging fruit on, on finding those early sales and finding those early customers. So that's a, a one I'm really excited to be a bit more of a spectator on. And then finally, we're going to wrap up the series on July 21st. Again, Josh back with me to talk about raising capital and getting that, uh, that first financing done for your startup. Today's mission, how to leverage startup networks and grow your business. So as I said, we're going to kick things off here in a second with Shona talking about how to tap into new markets. Then we're going to talk about how you find startup friends. Where do they, where do they hang out? Uh, how do you get in touch and uh, why they're so important to founders, especially those first time founders like I was who are trying to get uh, a handle on how to, how to build a startup because it is no easy feat, I can assure you. And then I also just dropped this number three in there, plant seeds all the time. And I'll flesh that out. But really the idea there is no one's going to build your startup for you. And if you're not the one out there planting seeds in the brains of every single person, you know, uh, I think I do that. Wouldn't you say? As a gardener. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's so critical to be planting those seeds all the time and just be turned on that. You never know where a relationship could take your business. So that's today's mission. I'll pass it over here to Big Z in a second, but uh, I am the startup founder here and uh having spent four and a half years practicing in a corporate law firm i saw how broken it was from the inside i was tired of sending out those huge bills to all the clients and getting the angry phone calls that i wasn't even getting paid for because most of the money was going up top to the partners um so i left two and a half years ago uh with a couple of terrific co-founders the team has grown a lot since then but uh parker and tom if you're around uh the three of us left or I left the firm and joined those guys to, to build something better. And uh, that's what we're doing over here at Goodler. And I'm Zach Big, so I'm the grants guy. That was a more relevant title on the last webinar where I was talking about grants. Today, I'm more of the moderator guy, but within Good Lawyer, I still am uh, in that role. I'm the director of public policy at Good Lawyer, which means I'm responsible for leveraging all the resources that are out there to help startups like your own out there. So um, making sure that we're taking advantage of accelerators, grant funding opportunities, and all the other supports that exist um, solely just to help businesses like yours. So um, yeah, that's me. Prior to working at Good Lawyer, I worked uh, at the University of Calgary helping academics to access some of these similar resources. Yeah, he was on the inside and now he's on the Good Lawyer team. Now over to Shona. 
Thank you. So hi, I am Shona. I am the trade manager at Calgary Economic Development. Uh, in a nutshell, I manage the trading team, the running of the trade accelerator program, aftercare for companies and the overall trade portfolio. So I'm um, just kind of a, some quick information about me as I've been at CD for almost five years now. Um, I've always kind of been a part about the of the trade and investment ecosystem. I love working with SMEs and entrepreneurs. That's really my bliss. It fills my cup. Um, and I've been really lucky to be able to work with over 200 entrepreneurs through the Trade Accelerator program and, and many more in different capacities. So really, um, if you haven't heard about Calgary Economic Development, you can go on our website and check out some more about our, our holistic kind of economic strategy uh, for Calgary and the new economy. But really what the trade team does is we support local companies in their global expansion plans. So everything from supporting companies as they go on trade shows, bringing inbound delegations to Calgary, local activations like the Trade Acceler pro, uh, accelerator program or export meetups or things along those lines. Um, and we really pride ourselves on being a connector. So whether it to be to the local ecosystem or to in-market support services. So we just really want to support companies in achieving their global expansion plans. I always say I have no skin in the game. It's so awesome to work for a not-for-profit where I'm really gauged on the success of companies. So that's my, my kind of level of success is how much we can help other companies as they're looking at uh, going into different markets. So um, if I could have the next slide, please. And I'm just going to chime in there. Yeah. You're in Calgary and you don't know Shona. You need to meet Shona because she is one of the best uh, networkers and promoters of startups in town here in Calgary. And if you're not in Calgary, because I know we've got folks from all across the country, you need to find your Shona in whatever center you're, you're living in, because these are the types of people that are going to be able to open doors for you. And like Shona just said, that's her job she's gauged on the success of you and your startup. So you got to find your Shona. We've been blessed to, to have found you early in our journey. Oh, well, thank you. I feel like, can we like trademark this? Find your Shona. I love it. Maybe people will pronounce my name properly like you guys do. <laughs> um, so definitely, I see some, just some things popped up about uh, different, and as Brett said, about finding your kind of person. Um, so with the Trade Accelerator program and different kind of organizations, Trade Accelerator program is actually a national program. So everyone can find kind of that support service within their market. Um, so really the Trade Accelerator program, I'll give you a little blurb about that. So it's kind of a six week accelerator all about glo your global expansion journey so it gives you customized face-to-face -face advice helps you navigate the ecosystem um, gives you great access to a network of thought leaders and experts and that's a really big thing for me it's not people just talking at you it's a conversation and these are conversations that last after the program um, and it gets you really familiar with international best practices everything from the culture of doing business in other markets um, to tax and legal all of that fun stuff um, and really one of the most important things is help you develop and set up a global expansion plan. So for me, a big part about the accelerator that I work on and that I will harp on today in general, I think they always should be actionable. I hate it when I hear companies that have gone through a program or an accelerator and they're being talked at and they leave it and they're like, well, I have some tidbits of information, but I have zero clue what to do with it. I'm just kind of going to leave it to the side, right? So for us, it's really how we can help you in that and how we can actually get you into those markets. So that's kind of a big thing with uh, tapping general. Um, we're really lucky in Calgary too. We have a grant where it's actually complimentary for companies to take the trade accelerator program. I'm going to continue on that for as long as possible. I don't like charging companies for services like this. So we've been lucky so far. Um, and yeah, I was saying we have to over 200 companies have taken the program so far. So please, in that regard, reach out if you want to take tap, you know, if you've got more questions about it. Um, and even if you maybe you're not a great fit then, um, I know we'll talk about this later, so I won't get too into it. There's still ways we can help you and we might be able to squeeze you into the program, even if you maybe think you're a little bit too early or things like that. Absolutely. TAP was such a great program for us. And, you know, not only because we were pretty early, Shona, when we started our, our TAP adventure and, uh, you know, we've expanded outside of Canada a little bit, but we haven't, you know, gone on our sort of global domination tear just yet. Uh, <laughs> but what it has also provided Good Lawyer is this unbelievable network of other startup founders. In particular, the alumni Slack channel that you guys run is one of the busiest channels that I'm a part of. And it is just so cool getting to meet these, these startup friends that I mentioned earlier and programs like TAP are a fantastic way to do that. 
you know, and it's, and it's great to hear that too. And I, you know, I kind of did frame that toward good lawyer when I'm like, if you're a little bit earlier in the process, cause you know, we always try to take any companies that are enthused or are looking outward, even if it's at a really early stage, I think gone are the days where it's like ABCD, where it's like city, province, country, then international, like especially tech and service companies, they're looking outward so much quicker. And personally, the world needs more Canada. So if we can help get more Canadian and Calgarian, specifically, I'm a little bit biased, um, businesses to prosper and go global in that regard, it's fantastic. So, and there's always ways we can help too. And that's a big thing is that even if you're reaching out to an accelerator, even if you're looking for some support and they that one might not be for you, there's other things, they probably know something that will be the right fit for you and you know a, a big thing about our program is you know we it's not you're under no obligation so it's not like you take the program and then two months i'm like why aren't you in another country why aren't you in another market it's like no like how are you what are you doing um is there something we can do to help you from your business in general but then also from those global expansion plans so we usually have two types of companies that take the program they're like okay i've got my i've got my plan i'm going into market in like six months or virtually you know, this past year into market. And I'm looking at getting those deals and, and being successful in that regard. And then some other companies take it and they're like, oh my goodness, now I know that I need to get five more staff for capacity. I need to build my manufacturing. I need to redo my website. There's all these things now that they have to do. And I would say that both companies are both then been successful graduates of the program because they're taking what they need and it's supporting their business. And to me, that's the, the number one thing. I think that's a really important point that you made that there are these secondary benefits to participating in an accelerator. Obviously you're being taught how to better run your business, but there's all these networking benefits and these other less obvious benefits that come with it. So we'll be touching a lot on networking uh, later on in this presentation, um, but I, I'll just let you finish off your little presentation here first. Sure, perfect, so I think I just have one. Yeah, perfect, so just some stats here. I'm a big stat person, so um, in 2021, and so this is just in the last six months, we've had 11 companies enter new markets, and this has been during a global pandemic. So in last year, we actually had 16 companies throughout the whole year entering new markets. And then we actually have 14 companies now expanding jobs and space. So kind of on that other frame where they've realized kind of what they need to do, or they've been going into these new markets and now they have the capacity and the revenue to hire on these new employees. Um, I'm just kind of looking ahead. We have three cohorts in the second half of the year. Yes, knock on all of the wood. I'm doing that on the channel here. They're going to be in person. So we plan them for in person, um, which I'm sure any alumni on the call will be stoked about because that means we get to have our receptions. Um, and then October is going to be women led. So this is something that I'm really passionate about and tap. We're, we're always looking for ways that we can also do some more specific cohorts, whether it be sector specific um, and any kind of underrepresented group specific cohorts too because we really want to make sure that we're giving everyone the same footing to be successful as a business on the world stage so we're actually going to have a female facilitator as many speakers as possible are going to be female um, representation from those companies all of the um, companies yes like I said will be female led and it's going to be really exciting so and then we have our general ones in September and November um, and then we're also going to start doing our export meetups again so every month we usually have a really low key come grab a drink have a snack and meet some people in your ecosystem so hint hint that's probably going to be some things that would really help leverage and network and build your community here um, and then we're also planning on doing some export awards this year to help show some of our awesome alumni and companies in calgary that have been growing or in alberta that have been growing so i know you're going to share this presentation but i've got the google doc to apply and our tapyyc.ca uh, webpage and really as anyone who knows me on this call, um, I am a talker. I have no problem having a chat with you, going for a coffee, going for a beverage, having a phone call. Um, I'd love to connect no matter if you're in Calgary or not in Calgary. If you're at whatever stage you are in your business, I'm always happy to kind of take a phone call and chat with you a little bit. And I think I think that's everything on my, well, on my before slides. We, before we jump ahead, Shona, I'm just going to put Katie on the spot and volunteer her for uh, speaking at that woman-led if you want anyone. Yes. To talk about social media and uh, partnership development because she's owning those for us and events putting these these awesome webinars on which have been um, such a huge uh, brand builder for us so Katie uh, Shona if, if Shona wants you on there you go oh of course see look at this leveraging our network another hint hint moment here on the on the webinar so now that sounds fantastic so great yeah consider the seed planted <laughs> There you go, networking in action. 
Uh, Shona, ready for the next slide? Or yes, I, I don't know. I have another slide. Do I? I, <laughs> I don't think so. But just uh, I see you've added a link here for anyone who's interested in learning more about the TAP program. They can just go that. And I just wanted to reiterate that this is a nation a nationwide program. So for those of you who are joining from anywhere in Canada besides Calgary, TAP is still relevant. It's run out of different organizations in different cities across the country. So just find uh, how TAP is run in your city. Yeah. And honestly, you can always still reach out to me and I can connect you with that local support in the place where you are. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. We all like to work together. And Shauna, maybe just uh, before we move on here, maybe you could just explain how TAP works in the context of, you know, in your case, Calgary Economic Development, but the other agency that sort of TAP attaches to in each city. For sure. So kind of, uh, as mentioned, it's a national program and then every, so some provinces have hubs. So they have a hub, like for instance, STEP in Saskatchewan, they run TAP and they'll run it maybe out of different jurisdictions and cities throughout the year. Um, once again, the one kind of positive to it being a virtual world is a lot more people have been able to connect via TAP in a digital world. Um, so, but every city like Edmonton Global and, and Chambers. So actually Calgary Economic Development is a little bit unique because we are an ec dev agency running TAP. For the most part, it's a lot of the chambers um, or the boards of trades, which is also great because they have a whole team there that's working specifically on trade. So you, you connect with them and you go through TAP or once again, if you're not quite ready yet, they might um, connect you to some pre-TAP programming uh, and do things that way. Um, and, you know, in different cities, some of them do have some nominal fees because they're not as fortunate to have the grants that we have and that we applied for here. Um, so you kind of connect with those different jurisdictions. And then when you're done the program, they'll send you to an aftercare person. The only difference is we have a really small and mighty team at CED. So it's Thomas, David, and myself, and I am the aftercare person. So you're stuck with me the entire time. <laughs> so uh, that's really how it works. And then we try to work together on a national level where you know if we're going to go to some different conferences or events um then we try to have like a tap contingent also uh and are we in toronto or ontario yes so ontario actually is where tap was born at the toronto board of trade so they actually have the most cohorts out of anybody in ontario so they have i think six, uh, six different jurisdictions for tap so you can definitely find that a lot of them if you google like toronto tap or toronto trade accelerator program or toronto board of trade or things along those lines and pretty much exactly for whatever city or province you're in, that we pop up on the list. So you should get a nice kind of check in there. Once again, if you'd like me to be that e-intro person for you, just like we heard about it on this on this uh, webinar, please kind of, and I can say, you know, they're great, they listened in, they're, they're really engaged in TAP. So I do not mind being the middle person. Amazing, maybe we'll get you to drop your email in the chat there, Shona. Sure, perfect, the world's longest email. Yeah, and just for, you know, all the, the early stage founders that might be listening, to this today. Um, I've learned this through the last three years, but you really got to start thinking if you're a startup for the most part, global right from the get go, even if you're not ready, you know, you're not going to take over the world overnight, but you really need to have an idea of where your startup can go. And for me, going through the TAP program uh, really opened my eyes to that and forced me to put on paper some of the ideas that have been percolating and really kind of flesh those out. So again, Tap's awesome. Find your Shona. Let's go. So now we're moving on to the fireside chat portion of the presentation. So this is going to be just an informal conversation between Brett and Shona, where they'll both talk about their experiences with accelerators, talk about leveraging networks. Um, and really, I'm just going to try to get out of the way and let them just kind of make this as informal and fun and informative as possible. So we'll start off with maybe 20 minutes of me asking them a couple questions, letting them do their thing. Then we'll go to some uh, pre-submitted questions that some of the audience members have submitted. Um, then we'll be getting into some questions in the chat. So I would encourage you, if, if any questions pop into your mind, just drop them in the chat. I'll be monitoring them as we go through and I'll be posing a couple of those to Brett and Shona. Shona and me are both big talkers. So the, the questions will help break out <laughs> our, uh, our dialogue a little bit. So to kick things off, Shona, I was hoping you might be able just to give a, a foundational description of what accelerators are and how they help startups in maybe a minute or less. 
oh, you mean a timeline here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that there's accelerators really are in a nutshell programs, right? So they're programs that are supporting businesses and there's different types uh, dependent on what kind of business you are, where you're looking at and what you're looking to do. So everything from, you know, District Ventures had a great one for food and beverage companies as they're growing um, nationally to kind of take them to the next step to go global. Um, or there's the smaller ones, Platform Calgary has a, a great kind of group of accelerators that support um, as your startup and start Calgary, everything from ideation, they do small ones like Startup Weekend. It's really a way where instead of you having to reach out as a company to 15 different people to get 15 different answers to your questions and where there might be areas of collaboration, they put you all in one room or, or one Zoom space and get you thinking all together. And I think for me, the big part about accelerators is the collaboration. The collaboration and the knowledge in one room through four sessions is probably going to give you like other than a month of you reaching out on your own to these different people right and I think it's that backing so I would say that's really the, the big part about it and accelerators I feel like there's one for every type of company I don't think it's one size fits all you really find the one that works for you and I think all of the accelerators have really marketed themselves that way but I would say it's that that kind of speed pass to collaboration and knowledge totally sounds not so dissimilar from your grant presentation last week talking about finding the right one yep yep knowing what uh, what what fits your business best um understanding the stage you're at and your business objectives and finding one that fits yeah and i and i would just add to that you know we've been through a few accelerators and i think we've got a pre-submitted question so i'll lay them all out um in further detail later in the webinar today um but you really get what you put in you don't just show up at an accelerator and you know put in minimal work and then at the end of it your business is skyrocketing it is a learning opportunity a networking opportunity but that's all it is is an opportunity so you really will get what you put in and you know if you pick the right accelerators there are typically some really smart people that can help expedite that learning so that's how i've approached all the accelerators from day one is expediting that that learning and trying to push the startup as fast as possible along that journey before the runway runs out. So um, just want to really iterate that. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's a learning opportunity, but, you, but they're, they're a lot of work if you do them right. Putting myself into the shoes of some of our viewers today, entrepreneurs, they've already got a million things on their plate. And they're probably thinking, oh, this is one more thing for me to have to do and worry about. So maybe Shona or Brett, you could chat a bit about what is required from the entrepreneur within, a, within an accelerator. Um, what if they can't attend every little session? Um, are there options for in-person and remote? I'll jump in there quickly, yeah. Sean. I'll pass it over to you. Um, my thinking on that is, as a startup founder, and this is just speaking for me from personal experience, you know, I was a, a corporate lawyer for four and a half years. I'd ran some little landscaping and painting businesses when I was younger. So I'd run a business before, but I can tell you, and if you're building your startup, you will know, building a startup is a completely different basket. And uh, frankly, the hardest basket I've ever found to try to work on. And so for me, the accelerators have provided, and again, you get what you put in, some are better than others, but what they've in general provided is direction on what we should be working on because there's a million things that you can be working on. You know, we're on this webinar right now. I could be out doing 18 other things, but we're here on this webinar because we deem this a really great brand building opportunity and an opportunity to help other entrepreneurs in our ecosystem, other startup founders. So um, for me, it was really the accelerators provided a bit more of a direction in a world that at the time looked like a total abyss. Yeah, and, I, and you know, I would say on the side of, I guess, like the man, the accelerator, right? I, I would preface this too with, uh, you know, good accelerators. And, and that's a big thing that you have to learn too as kind of an entrepreneur and a startup as you're going out is that not all accelerators are created or run equal. So there will be some that might be more of that pay to play. And, you know, you pay the 500 bucks and they don't care how much you collaborate or how much you're there or anything along those lines. Or there might be ones kind of in the more not-for-profit space. Like for myself, it's my expectation is during the, the TAP uh, Trade Accelerator program is that you, you're engaged and that, you know, if you can't attend something, let me know. It's a conversation. It's not the end of the world if you can't attend one of the half days, especially during a virtual world. It's really easy to be able to send you the content. But things like, you know, we give a good two, we give a two-month period of you knowing that you have your 
export plan do? So if you come to me, which we always have companies come to me like a day before and say, oh, it's not done or I can't do it, then that gets a little bit like, okay, that time management side of things. But I would, I would say on the same thing, it's what, what you get out of it. We have some companies that take it, you know, they're semi-engaged, they hand in their plan, they take some notes and, and that's kind of it in their journey. There's some of them like good lawyer that are completely engaged then in that after process too. And they, they take as much from the program as possible. Um, once again, though, it's about having those honest conversations and that's me doing my job. So when I talk to you about TAP, I'm not going to tell you, oh, it's super easy. There's no time commitment. Uh, it's just free. You kind of show up and you're good to go. No, I'm going to tell you there's things like the export plan that's due that we do have workshops that we work together as a group for. So I think the same thing is keeping your mind open because for instance, day one, we do the business model canvas. I get probably about four companies in Excel or a cohort that say, well, I've already done the business model canvas. And I'm like, yes, but have you done it as it pertains to your global expansion plan in your business? And they say, well, no, but it's the same thing. And I'm like, eh, I don't think you're getting the point of tap then <laughs> because it's a completely different thing, right? So it's kind of keeping your mind open to the fact that even some things might sound familiar, but getting those different tidbits. So I think it's just time management and expectations on both sides too. Totally. And that was one of the things that I really loved about tap was the deliverable was something that i felt was more pertinent to the business than some of the other programs that we've been in or or looked at getting involved in which seemed to be almost exclusively focused on pitching and that's been one of my sort of beefs with uh just sort of the accelerator world is this you know being able to pitch your business is critical Having a simple slide deck that explains at a high level what you're doing is very important. But being able to pitch on a stage to investors you've never met before is not the most important thing for a startup founder. And I can tell you that firsthand because I've got a bit of uh, stage fright, believe it or not. And I didn't do a lot of those um, on stage pitching, take advantage of those opportunities. And even the people that I saw that did very seldom did those turn directly into investments. What really turned into investments, that might spark the interest, but it's those conversations, those, that relationship building that you have to do after the fact where you're going to be able to raise real money and grow your business. So um, pitching is important in my mind, but it's not the be all end all. And I have seen some accelerators that kind of frame it like that. Like this is the most important thing in your business and it's not. Customers and sales, that's the most important thing in your business. You know, and I and to kind of jump off of that too, I'd say another kind of important thing that people don't think about as it pertains to accelerators is sometimes it's always, you know, for some point it might be just you and your ship, right? Or it might be a small team of five or 10 or anything along those lines. But another big thing as you're looking at accelerators is making sure you have the right people in the room, right? Just because you're the founder or the CEO of this of your business or your startup doesn't mean maybe that's the most valuable use of your time throughout the whole thing, right? Or maybe it is. So you have to think if you're not in charge of any of the sales marketing and finances of your company and that's the three main things that an accelerator does uh that specific one maybe you send one of your representatives there right so that's a big thing that we do is because sometimes we have um the wrong people from the company in the room and then when they go to make the plan they're like oh well my my finance person did this side and you know my, my sales person did like 90 percent of the plan i'm like oh well why weren't they here then to be able to get all that information? So I think that's something you really have to think about too. And that's a great kind of use of your time. We've had companies that have said, you know, I want to really do these two days, but can I have a couple extra people come in that really relate to that part of the agenda? And I say, go for it. Like bring whomever you think is the best in the room. Totally. And just following on that as well, the goal of getting into and, you know, successfully completing an accelerator. And again, there are tons now like tons, we partner with them, reach out, we can connect you, um, is the goal should be to learn something from the accelerator that's going to elevate your business. The goal should not be simply to get into the accelerator. Like the, getting into an accelerator is great if it propels your business forward, but if it doesn't, it's, it's just kind of a waste of time. And, you know, again, it's a great place to start making those startup film friends and, and planting those seeds and building your network. So, We've been involved in many of them for a reason, but the objective has always been to propel the business forward, not just to get into the accelerator to feel like we're in the cool kids club. 
I, I would agree with that a hundred percent, right? Because like, once again, if if that's the only reason why you join an accelerator and then you realize all this work and stuff is is involved in it, then it, it's, it can be a little bit jarring for you and your company. And it might set you back. You know, there are some companies that I've talked to and I said, you know, you're really not at that stage yet. You're maybe you're a um, food and beverage company and you haven't even actually gotten your initial shipment out from a national level or a local level, right? So you don't even have your labeling done and things along those lines. So, and I say, you know, th those six weeks doing this would probably be more valuable in a year versus now, but let's get you connected in some other ways into the ecosystem. So you do have to think too that, how is it actually going to help your business? Once again, I, I really hope from that frame point of the accelerator that the person will tell you when you have that initial conversation with them, how they think your business is going to be able to um, prosper from this accelerator. And to be honest with you and not just take the money or not just take that win of a company joining, um, if it's going to be a great fit for you or not. Absolutely. For sure. And, and speaking about how you can have other members of your team come in for one session, if it's relevant to them, I don't know when Goodler was going through tap, I popped in for, for one session because it was specifically about drafting that outward facing narrative. Uh, and so it made sense for me to just pop in for that. And I know we had some of our, our marketing team members come through for those sessions. So it's a, it's a team effort, even though maybe you, you, the business owner, draft the application, you can rely on other team members to to get it across the line. Um, so that was a great kind of like scene setter. And I think you guys have maybe whet the appetite of our audience for the benefits that come with participating in an accelerator. Uh, I think the next logical question might be, okay, so where can these entrepreneurs find out about what accelerators are out there? And maybe more importantly, how do they figure out which is the right fit for their company? For sure. So, you know, and I saw a question earlier in the chat about that. Can you send us a list of, of all that it would pertain to a certain business? And I wish I could say yes, like here's a specific list for your specific business, but it's, I would really say it's, it's not one size fits all. And I say a lot of it has to be in my own personal opinion, your, your view too on the accelerator. So once again, we, you could wheedle it down to like, here are 20 um, startup accelerators here in Calgary. Okay, five of them are as it pertains to your business, because I know some still are kind of split between tech and services and consumer packaged goods. Okay, maybe I have the budget to be able to do one, one pay to play accelerator. So you really have to wheedle that down. Um, now, that's actually a great question. I don't know. Uh, this is my, my favorite answer. I don't know if there's a full list of accelerators here, but I will find the answer to that. And if if good lawyer doesn't have kind of that full list, I will get you a full list of accelerators in a general term, but it really is up then to the company of you figuring out what's best for you. I would say if you had some time, do some critical thinking of the list and then reach out to maybe your top three that you think would be a great fit for you and have that conversation with them. Um, that just led me to a great blog post, Mr. Biggs. That's, we're going <laughs> to build up the blog post for the, the list of Canadian accelerators. Yeah, and then I will share it. That takes a little bit off of my plate. <laughs> um, this one we were going to touch on later, but I just saw, I think it was Amon that uh, asked this question, which accelerators has Good Lawyer been a part of? Um, honestly, I might, I might miss one. And if it comes to me, I'll, I'll bring it up later. But obviously, we went through the Trade Accelerator Program. That was one of our first ones. Um, we were still a very young company at that time. And again, it just set the scene for what global extent global expansion might look like in the future. Uh, and we got connected with Shona who has just connected us with so many more people in the ecosystem. So that was uh, a home run, that one for us. Uh, we did the accelerator. Uh, I think the accelerator YYC used to be based out of Inglewood. That was the first one we ever did. And that was when we were very green and, uh, it was good. It was, it was great to connect with, again, a cohort of companies. I don't know how many of those companies are still, still alive and well, but certainly a few are doing really well. And again, that was a bit heavy on the pitching side for me, for my liking. I was looking for more tangible kind of growth tactics and that kind of thing. But on the whole, um, it was our first experience sort of getting into the mindset of pitching to investors, getting that presentation, that pitch deck, you know, looking as nice as, as we could get it. And then I, again, I think the biggest benefit from, from that one for us was just connecting and making start, startup friends. Like I can't tell you how amazing it is to make your first startup friends because this is a scary journey. And when you are, you know, doing it alongside other folks that, that understand the trials and turbulations you're feeling, um, it just, it helped me sleep better at night 
knowing that there was other people out there that I knew going through the same kind of hurdles. So um, that was the accelerator. We did Lean Stack through Alberta Innovates. And that one actually was coupled with a pretty significant grant. So just financially, that was a terrific one for us. Um, Lean Stack was great because it included some one-on-one -on -one mentoring from mm -hmm. a startup coach based out of Texas. Uh, his name's Ash Moria. He's a pretty influential guy when it comes to, to startups, especially the, the lean traction first approach to running a startup. So I think he invented the lean canvas. He has a book about it, something yeah. like that. So um, he was great. And we had maybe five one-on-one -on -one hour long sessions with him where he just tutored us on running our business. And that was so valuable. And, you know, full disclosure, that was one that I think we underutilized because I, uh, you know, there's a million things going on everything we you know we did that during the pandemic so everything's virtual you're not like in a, a session so it's easy to kind of let it slip and we obviously made all those sessions but looking back i wish i wish we prepped a little more for those to really have maximized you know this incredibly smart startup guy who was there um thanks to alberta innovates to to help teach us and again expedite that learning expedite that learning is how i view accelerators just expediting learning um we also have gone through Less of an accelerator, more of a sales and marketing program, but we did that with 321 Growth Academy with Kara Houston and her team. Again, Carrie's going to be on uh, our number six lesson, I think, in a couple of weeks. So come out to that and, and learn some things from Carrie because she's fantastic, uh, unbelievable sales expertise, and uh, we learned a lot from her. And then actually, one of the things we started with Shona, this might have been back when you were at Startup Calgary. Um, the I can't even remember what they're called, but the the startup Calgary like intro ones. Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, like the, the the BMC sessions or the yeah, and they're start yeah, there's that start again. This, those mm -hmm. escalate right. Maybe touch on those for a minute. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, and I used to be, so some background here is that Calgary Economic Development used to have Startup Calgary a part of it too. And the, and the trade team would always be very excited to be a part of the cool kids with Startup Calgary. Um, and, you know, they really worked on everything from ideation to revenue generation. So that was a really big thing with them. And I know that still is. And I, I follow them on Instagram and Twitter. And I always see that they still have these BMC sessions. And that's when you're really deep diving into the business model canvas and how it pertains to starting your business and really finding if you're, um, it's a viable product for you, right? Getting that and, and building that MVP um, and making sure that you have the right kind of model for your business or do you need to pivot, which spoiler alert, 99% of companies pivot at some point in their startup journey, right? Exactly. Good lawyer. Um, and, you know, just as you're, you're saying that and kind of mentioning some of these other accelerators, it's actually really cool to see, at least in the Calgary and Alberta ecosystem, is that like Terry speaks at tap for us as it pertains to sales for global expansion and things along those lines. So there's so many intertwining support services that you get through all of these accelerators and as you're building those relationships with all of those support services and connections that's where you really take the most kind of value and you can take advantage of these programs right and you're building that relationship and if, you, if you've taken three accelerators where you're like carrie i'm now learning everything from you in these different kind of lenses of my business like and now where do we go next from here right so it's building that relationship on both sides Absolutely. I think that's a great segue to start talking about leveraging networks more. You spoke about how connecting with other startups through these accelerators can really not just give you kind of friends and a network, but really even potential partnerships or B2B sales. Could you guys speak to maybe the value of, of some partnerships for startups? For sure. So one that I haven't kind of mentioned yet, I was not so patiently waiting because I get very passionate about it is our alumni network within the trade accelerator program. So a big thing that we learned within our accelerator um, and that I know nationally now they're really kind of biting onto for TAP is cool, you took the accelerator, now what? How do you leverage these networks? So what we have is like a Slack ecosystem. We do alumni events and we have so many synergies from all of our alumni. You know, we have so many of that have ended up collaborating together through the process. Our kind of golden rule of TAP is please don't sell to other companies during the program. When you're done the program and it's that alumni time and you're all working together, let's see how we can all kind of go together and be a team, have that team Calgary or team Alberta approach to be stronger together. So so 
for me, I think that's probably the most value. And we get, we have some very engaged members on our Slack channel that ask the most obscure questions. And I'm going to be honest, I'm sector agnostic. I know enough about enough to make me dangerous, but I lean on my connections, right? I lean on my speakers. I lean on my companies to answer some of these that I don't necessarily know, because as much as I love working with SMEs and startups and entrepreneurs, I have not been one, right? I support them. So that's really where I come to help. But for me, it's a connector. So the alumni really help each other on the Slack group. And then the partners really get to help. So if someone asks me, I guess a, a good example of this is that I had a company or I met with a HSBC, one of their international business advisors one day, he just reached out on LinkedIn. And I was like, Oh, you know, half hour of my time, go grab a coffee, not the end of the world. And he was talking about his business and also how he used to work for the bank in the Middle East and then came to Calgary. Um, and then I had a call the next day from one alumni that says, hey, we got a purchase order from Turkmenistan. We have no clue what to do with that purchase order. I'm like, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know Turkmenistan was a country. So <laughs> let me see what I can do. And, you know, I remember that conversation from the day before. And um, he comes back to me. He's like, oh, I actually, I was from the country next door to Turkmenistan. I did business with them all the time. Connect me with that company. I'll have like a little sit down intro chat with them and let's see what we can do. And then that company got into Turkmenistan. So I just thought it was such a cool, like, prime example of 30 minutes of your time in one place could actually really, really help your business without you even fully knowing it. Absolutely. I can't honestly think of almost any conversations I've had with new people that I regret. You know, some are much more beneficial than others, but I don't regret any of them because, you know, without taking those chances and, and taking those meetings with people that you don't know or, you know, can't hit peace perfectly into your, you know, your, your business plan or your your global expansion plan right away. You got to meet people, you got to plant those seeds and you never know where those doors are going to open. And as you're, I guess this is for Brett more so because he can speak to good lawyers experience with this, but as you're connecting with some of these other startups within Calgary across Canada and, and you identify some maybe potential for partnerships, can you speak to maybe the relationships you've struck, whether it's cross-promotional, um, kind of speak to how that process has gone about, whether it was just something that emerged organically, you saw, oh, we've got similar um, customer segments we're targeting, but we're not competing. Maybe we can kind of collaborate somehow. What's, what, how did that go? Yeah, so I mean, Shona, I might've, I might've broken your tap rule because I can almost guarantee you I was selling. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll always be close. No, you're blacklisted now, never again. <laughs> um, but when we're looking at partnerships, and again, you know, we're, we're still early days in, in learning how to most effectively partner um, with some of these other organizations that have, uh, I think the phrase that was getting thrown at me the other day was homogenous audiences. So customers that look like your customers, but they're servicing them from a different angle. For us, you know, we're all about entrepreneurs and startups. So who else services entrepreneurs and startups? Accountants, banks accelerator programs, you know, all of these types of organizations that are meant to facilitate and further, you know, the entrepreneurial ambitions of these founders. And so really trying to figure out how you can help the partner um, beyond just an affiliate fee, but really try to like help solve a problem they're experiencing with their customers. And for us, you know, a lot of people have run into the, the issue of, of trying to find fast, affordable legal help. So um, we are an attractive partner for a lot of these organizations, but you know, you don't have to go the full nine yards right away. We've got over a hundred partners across the country, most of whom, you know, we don't have signed agreements with most of whom we cross promote marketing materials. We send customers to them if we think they can help and vice versa. So a lot of our partnerships look like that really lightweight. And then we're just starting to develop some more of these channel partners that are a little bit more heavy, do have some contracts baked around them because there is flow of money. Um, and we're just in, in the beginning stages of that, but I'm really excited because I see the opportunity for these channel partners to dramatically change the outlook of Good Lawyer moving forward. And Brett, you spoke about how you're a bit of a gardener, you're a perpetual seed planter, and you're always trying to uh, put out the good word Share, share good lawyer with, with your network. Can you talk about the habits you have for how to be constantly 
leveraging networks and how it's something that it seems comes naturally to you. I know you use LinkedIn quite a bit as a way to reach out to your network. LinkedIn is super powerful. Um, you know, I think there's lots of sides of the business where uh, my skill sets don't play so naturally. Um, fortunately, I am a sort of 100% extrovert, it would seem sometimes. So for me, it comes natural to, you know, be relentlessly promoting the company, constantly trying to find value. I guess that's actually how I would describe it is I'm constantly trying to sniff out value for good lawyer, but also for the partner, because I recognize that it has to be beneficial on both sides for these partnerships to, to really connect and, and start working. So um, you got to be able to see the value on their side and then obviously on your side and then just talk to people all the time. And if you see me walking around Calgary or we'll be out in Toronto in September or just in Vancouver, you know, I wear this shirt every day, you know, like Steve Jobs, if he had a uh, good lawyer on his shirt. But for me, that's part of it. If you're meeting me out in public on a work day, you know, I work for good lawyer because it's on my chest. It's on our yeah. masks. Too. It's on our masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To actually kind of jump off of that too, and I'd say something that Good Lawyer does a very good job at, is that authenticity. Like for me, that's so big as you're, you're meeting people and you're getting out there is that if you come up to me at a meetup and you say, hi, Shona, I'm so-and-so, I do this, here's my pitch, um, here's my card, email me, have a nice day. Do you, Am I probably gonna do that? No, I'm probably not gonna email you afterwards. I'll probably be a little bit shocked and be like, okay, so that happened. But you know, if there's someone that comes up to you, has a conversation and realizes that, you know, it's, it's a relationship, right? It's not just you speaking at someone and hoping that you can get business and pitching them. It's creating authentic relationships with people, right? It's being, being, and that's the one thing about, I think that entrepreneurs uh, don't really have to worry about as much as, you know, us on the other, other side is that because you're so passionate about what you're doing, right? And your business that when you put that through, I think that relates so much to people around you. I'd much rather have someone, you know, have a conversation with me, ask how I am, and then, you know, talk about who they are and then ask about what I do. And I think that's the best way to have these conversations um and as good lawyer says with their their swag and everything we also do have our our tap calgary local laundry sweaters uh and our face masks too that have our our logos all plastered on them but in plus 40 i'm not wearing my fleece sweater today so you lost out on that <laughs> and, and shona you, you totally hit the nail on the head there which is you know the companies you know if you're doing an announcement good lawyer partners with tap tap you know it's it's at the company level that the partnership you know is announced but at the more fundamental level, it's it's person to person. So, you know, partnerships are established in conversations between the founder and someone else that they wanna to talk to. So you really do need to foster that person to person relationship when you're um, trying to figure out how to make partnerships work for you. And if you're a founder and that does not come naturally at all, you know, you gotta try and, you know, you gotta get help where you need it. So um, for me, again, there's other aspects of the business that are way, over my head and and I look for help on those areas and I lean into the things that you know make sense for my skill set. Yeah. And you know, I'd say from the accelerator perspective too, and leveraging these networks is sometimes almost companies get starstruck with some of the speakers and experts that they're listening to. And they say, Well, I don't want to I don't want to ask them if they want a coffee afterwards. Or I don't want to reach out because you know they might think I'm stupid for some of the questions I'm asking, or I'm not at that level and they're so far ahead of me, or even other companies. Like I know good lawyer, you were in the same cohort as Atabotics, um, both amazing companies at two very different levels right or, or spots in, in your your journeys as businesses but it's not being scared to leverage no matter where you're at in that journey um and that's what i love about tap is there's that collaboration between the small medium large and the, the partners and experts that have been doing this for years so i would say that's a really big one and and another like i would just harp on this again like that 30 minutes could be so valuable because you go to one meetup you go to you go to one coffee and just really take the time to do it because you really don't know. And I'm not saying that your whole day should be meetings, but I'm saying that if you're able to do one a day or say, you know, every Friday is going to be my meeting day where I'm going to have like coffee hours and I'm going to stay at Phil and Sebastian. I'm going to start meeting with some people and, and create some connections. So things like that, I think are really valuable too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're coming into the final 10 minutes of the presentation today. So I wanted to make sure we got around to these pre-submitted questions that we will be taking a few more questions from the chat after this, but just quickly, um, what should I look for when evaluating potential companies to partner with? Mutual value creation is how I would 
synthesize what we were just talking about. Yeah. What about you, Shona? Yeah, I would say, uh, once again, it's a relationship. Sometimes relationships go bad. Sometimes they're fantastic. And you really have to think about that uh, when you're going into one. It's, I hate to be that negative Nancy, and I'm not usually, but it's you do have to think about worst case scenario, right? So you have to think about when you're partnering and, and you're looking into being in business with this partner, and especially what you're giving out of that. So I know some person asked about equity or you know parts of your business. So what are you giving up and what are you prepared to lose if things go bad? is something I always try to tell companies also and talk to a good lawyer if you're <laughs> if you're contracting rights of your business excellent next one second pre-submitted question was what accelerators and similar programs has good lawyer been involved in yeah so actually that's perfect because I I want to ran through most of them I, I ran through the ones that we've done but uh I'm actually getting involved in another one on the other side for the first time ever, which is um, Futurepreneur. I'm going to be a mentor through that program, uh, which I'm really excited for. And then two that I wanted to mention as well, which we didn't get into. And frankly, it was very disappointing. That was Y Combinator. We put a video together. There was a huge application and we didn't get in. And it was a little heartbreaking at the time. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Same as CDL humongous application to find out that we weren't techie enough at the time and uh that one hurt too so what i'm saying here is sometimes trying to get into especially these more prominent accelerators they're hard and they can be hugely valuable but if you don't get in you, you can't give up um you know just because you weren't a good fit for that accelerator at that time or you know the reviewer who's probably looking at ten thousand applications just didn't see that spark in yours doesn't mean that you're you're dead in the water and you know good lawyer got rejected from those two uh accelerators and you know we're bigger and better than ever before so um you know i think we've actually passed the point where those accelerators make a lot of sense although uh if there's anyone on cdl here um, <laughs> they will be in touch you know, and I, just to quickly um, mention off that, if you don't get accepted to Accelerator, once again, what I always do is if they're not a good fit, I reach out to them and have a phone call. But also, if for some reason they don't when they, I, I don't say reject you or decline you or say not at this time, um, check in, be like, hey, what what was I missing? Or what do you, where do you think I need to be for that? And sometimes the answer is not what you like. Like for instance, it's you're, you're just not, you're not what we want. You don't check our boxes, which is unfortunate, right? And you can't do much about that if your business is your business and you, and it's a successful model for you. Um, mm -hmm. But there's sometimes where it says, actually, you know, you're just about, you know, 10 grand under the revenue projection or you know you just haven't been in business for the four years that we really have a hard stance on to get their funding to do these accelerators so sometimes it's a really easy fix and they say hey apply for the next cohort but when like what the uh brett said once they're dealing with hundreds of applications sometimes it's really hard to have that kind of curated stuff in in the the rejection letter so um i would say always reach out once again if that accelerator has really great kind of customer service skills, they should be able to take that call with you and communicate with you. Yeah, and on that note, Lazaridis is another one that we're looking at um, that we applied for, but we were just a little too early in our journey and actually Cement, who was one of the fastest growing startups that Calgary's ever seen, went through that program and we'll be uh, kicking that can again because, you know, we're getting bigger. We're looking at further expansion and uh, it feels like it could make sense either soon or at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't end. I mean, we've participated in five accelerators and we're still looking for more to participate in. It's it's a constant journey as our business evolves, as we're shifting kind of objectives and priorities, maybe looking more into international expansion down the road, then now a different type of accelerator becomes more important. So, uh, But the goal, again, is never to get into the accelerator. It's how do you expedite your learning and propel your business forward? And if this accelerator is a conduit to doing that, like TAP was for us, then it makes sense. Very good. So that was the second and, and last pre-submitted question. We've got a few more minutes though, so we can take a couple questions from the audience here. And uh, before we do that, Zach, yeah. I, I did promise everybody that I'd get through the offer and uh, hopefully you picked up some really good tidbits today, especially from Shona, who's the, who's the true expert here <laughs> on accelerators and what they can do for your business. Again, here's our upcoming webinars for the rest of the series. And uh, with that, I'm going to give you the quick little pitch on uh, this awesome deal we've got going on at Good Lawyer, and then we'll stick around for an extra five to 10 and answer any more questions that keep trickling in. So 
feel free to keep on sharing those questions in the chat. All right. I know today was about accelerators, but lawyer, finding a good lawyer popped up a couple of times and uh, it, I guess this is my job, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you got two options if you need a lawyer. You got law firm Larry and you got good lawyer Grace. And I can tell you the law firm Larry story because I used to be law firm Larry and I spent four and a half years at a big shop. And these are numbers that I'm just pulling straight from, from my past. Uh, 15 minutes on the phone with Larry a month equals 0.3. We round up as lawyers and we keep track of everything. That was the first lesson I learned on day one, never lose a point one. 3.6 billable hours over the course of that 15 minute call once a month is gonna run you at the end of the day over 1400 bucks. Seems crazy, but it, that is the reality. Um, those $400 an hour <laughs> ratchet up very quickly. So, you know, that that's the old traditional model. Obviously good lawyers a little bit different. Um, for 15 minutes, that's one of our microservices. We've got the $25 per page contract reviews as well, but our $39 15 minute advice session um, is one of our staples. Talk to the guys in the chat if you wanna take Good Lawyer for a test drive. Again, you can see the price, totally different ball game. And you know, just as importantly, pure transparency. You know that upfront, that bill you got from Larry was a total surprise. And uh, if you do get that bill from Larry, make sure you push back because he's probably gonna knock it down a little bit. Not, not to this level, but a little bit. For the folks that need more than 15 minutes a month, that's why we built Good Lawyer Pro for 447. That's our regular price. I've got something sweet coming in a second. Uh, you get unlimited advice, a discount on the marketplace, VIP legal concierge, which means you get to talk to some of our in-house lawyers before they match you. So you just get that higher level expertise on your, you know, finding the right lawyer journey. Uh, and then for all the webinar participants, because we're trying to build this community. And, uh, you know, if you've stuck around this long, we know that you're serious about trying to make your startup better and become a better startup founder, we've got a special deal for you. Uh, 297, this should be good until Friday, I believe. Katie or James, feel free to <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but this one should be good until Thursday or Friday. And uh, yeah, save 150 bucks on our Good Lawyer Pro membership. Uh, this is a webinar only offer, so we hope to see some folks signing up and bringing you in to the, the Good Lawyer Pro community, which is growing pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. That's it, folks. So now to get to a few audience questions, I know it's one o'clock. So if any of you have to sign off, thank you so much for joining in. Appreciate you coming out and trying to learn about how to become a better business owner. Um, our mission at Good Lawyer is to help you do that. So hopefully you come away having learned a few things. But I do see a couple of good questions in the chat here. So if you can, right, stick we'll, around. we'll do questions for five minutes, folks. And then we got to wrap it up because it's hot in the house without the AC yeah. muted on. So we got a great question here from Karat. He asks, how much equity do founders have to do away with as part of the accelerator? So this is a different financial model that some accelerators have. Yeah, it's super variable. Most startup accelerators in uh, Canada, not all of them, but most of them don't take the equity. Um, certainly none of the ones that we've gone through take the equity. A perfect example of one that does would be Y Combinator. They take, I believe it's 7% in return. Used to be for 70 grand, but I think that number's gone quite a bit up now. Um, but they're looking to take 7%. So Y Combinator is kind of the biggest accelerator globally. So I'd say that's probably the most common number when you're looking at accelerators who are, who are trading that cash for, for a piece of the equity in that early stage. Yeah, I would say that there was a uh, district ventures or district now that did the same thing for their their food and beverage accelerator, small amount, it was a conversation and you didn't, you didn't have to if you really didn't want to but that was part of the process. But yeah, I would say most the ones that I know anyways, in in Canada, it's more so time and sometimes a fee versus them taking that side of your business. Yeah, good. And we got a good question here from Claire who says I just became a licensed private vocational training institute. And I'm all ready to take enrollments for September. What accelerator might you recommend for me? So it sounds like she's um, just become incorporated and is, and is kicking off her business running vocational training. Anything that might come to mind? For me, yeah. And I would say less than super specific, but I would say like three, two, one growth and things along those lines. I would say this would be the one where you're looking at your sales and your marketing and your branding, right? And, and picking your kind of brand sales versus your, your getting, trying to get enrollment sales. So uh, that's such a longer conversation, but feel free to reach out and I can have a more conversation, a uh, bigger conversation with you about it. Yeah. 
Sounds good. We've got one other question here from Say Simone. Uh, it's not quite in the, it's a bit of a departure, but I think you guys might have some good insights for him or her. Uh, they ask, what are some of the best business plan templates for startup? Uh, yeah, what's a, what are some of the best business plan templates for a startup? I know that a lot of accelerators offer things like that, and that'll be a part of the edgy or part of the training that they offer is walking through that. But Shona, you probably get this question a lot. What do you think? I do. I would say, to be quite honest, any template is the best template in the beginning, right? Any actual document template. Um, so even if you Google on Word, uh, general business plan uh, template, once again, you're exactly right, though, Zach, every kind of accelerator, like we have our own template for our, our um, export uh, plan, mainly just because we know all the pieces that go into a lot of grants and funding that we want to make sure that you have in this plan so you don't, you're not doubling up the work. So it really depends. And if you're wanting to work on beforehand, and once again, ask your friends. This is a great thing about the, the network and the ecosystem. Ask some of your other entrepreneur friends what one has worked best for them. But the only thing I'll say to that is make a business plan. There's so many businesses that are now at like even like 10, 20 people. They've been around for like five years. And I'm like, how's your business plan? And they're like, oh, we don't have one. We just kind of do our thing. I'm like, no. So, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Not us, Shona. We learned. We learned I that. <laughs> I was like, oh, is this the point where good lawyers going to say they got rid of their business plan? <laughs> well, we've definitely got a business plan. And this ties back into our last webinar, which is a business plan is a requirement on many grant funding applications. So that's necessitated us constantly updating it. And so it's really made it worthwhile that we put a lot of effort into it from the outset. And we've got a good foundational business plan and we've just been adapting it constantly. Awesome. Well, that looks like the final question in the chat. So I think it's That's time to wrap it up. Yeah, we can get a 